This week's show is about a wild weekend, a weekend we just had, September 9th, 10th, and 11th. On 9th and 10th, the Dangers, the Cracker, uh, both played up at Pappy and Harriet's, and we'll have some, again, little snippets of uh, 
of that show and pictures of the crowd and just trying to get the general vibe of what it was like on the Sunday, September 11th, the return of Feistock. And it was just magnificent with a great range of bands, Bob Nye, Chris Williams, Bob and Lisa, Swive, The Dangers, and then an amalgamation of uh, Johnny Hickman, it was kind of Johnny and Mickey, Mickey and Johnny uh, show, and then a danger duo with uh, John Hickman and myself. And then the recombination of the old school dangers for a few uh, rock songs at the end. All in all, it was a wild weekend. just had a series of shows on the Lo-Fi Lounge about Fi Stock, trying to describe Fi Stock. First up on a Fi Stock day was a great friend uh, and a great songwriter. His name is Bob Nyes with a band called The Conditions. But he's playing here as a solo acoustic performer and there's something kind of magical about his songs, minus the electricity. It's another one I wrote about 40 years ago. And this was my take as a you know, young guy on the Inland Empire. This is called In an East Valley. Valley, all the shades are drawn. Time and reasons have passed and gone. Just like cars parked, fender to fender, and living on the terms of surrender. In my town, folks like how they're living. Keep your nose clean and your sins will be forgiven. Part of you if you go or if you stay. Be like a child, then we throw it all away. Well, we'll be safe and we'll be warm and we won't want to know that in East Valley all the shades are drawn. Time and reasons have passed and gone. Just like cars parked and a abandoned living on the terms of surrender. Well, in my town, folks walk the straight line. Don't let distractions play with the minds. Punch the clock, do what you're told. We'll have a pension and a trailer when we're old. Well, we'll be safe. And we'll be warm and we won't want to know That in East Valley all the shades are drawn Time and reasons have passed and gone Just like cars parked, fender to fender And living on the terms of surrender Fender and living on the terms 
of surrender, full of surrender, full of surrender, yeah, 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 of surrender. That's the end, I promise. Second on our five stock list uh, was Chris Williams. He's been in uh, high 70s, uh, dust on the radio. And... <laughs> Next up on the five stock lineup was my dear longtime friends, uh, Bob Benham, uh, Lisa Kakala. Uh, they're maybe better known as the Bell Rays. And if you go to Europe, you, you can't even get a pass to the next uh, town unless you know. <laughs> Chases a night, oh, it's more 
Poetry is always a part of our lo-fi lounge. And, and for a moment, I want to focus on uh, Patrick Daly and Grief and Horses and show a little bit of an interview. There's a six-part interview we did with Charlotte Muse and um, Patrick Daly, of which you've seen maybe only two segments of it. But I think it's important to share his poem, Tiananmen Square, with you now. Hello folks, uh, welcome to the Lo-Fi Lounge, Charlotte Muse and Patrick Daly. But we have two books. One is um, In Which I Forgive the River, that's by Charlotte Muse, Grief and Horses by Patrick Daly. Uh, but for Patrick, uh, his grief and horses, you have some political pieces that are in here that, again, a little like with Charlotte's book, you're following a bee and then you're with the torturer and uh, the some of the political pieces that are in here are very, very, um, very powerful and in, in I had almost forgotten about Tiananmen Square. How easy it is to forget as these yeah. horrible things pile up. How well, easy the Chinese it is to... government has been very assiduous in trying to make us forget about Tiananmen yeah. Square. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you want to read that? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a left turn, but it's, it, it's powerful. It, it's long. Um, it's okay. Okay. Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square, um, and this was in 1989, of course. Um, the poem is in a couple of sections, and the first section is, the people in frescoes digest the news. It was actually, the restaurant was actually fresco, but everyone called it frescoes, and they had great breakfast. <clears throat> the people in frescoes digest the news. They have their noses in the hot, dark story of coffee. They have ordered eggs and bacon. The place is filled with the warmth of coming food. How to swallow a bullet is not on the menu. The sturdy man on the front page, shaking a helmet in his fist and dirty with what lo looks like oil running off his face down his shirt. Surely what has happened to him can be washed off. The page would be sodden. This would be a black place of weeping. There'd be no pleasure in the hips of waitresses bringing fresh orange juice and oatmeal, pancakes, waffles with whipped cream and strawberries, iced tea. If a picture could seize the mind and penetrate at the pitch of the appetites. Belt of indestructible styrofoam, flesh of the flesh of a billion takeout cartons, the goddess of democracy is trash. Those who linked arms to protect her and those who left peacefully as they came hand in hand and those who stood in a long line across the road waiting while foot soldiers crouched between the tanks and took aim. And those who, stand, who then stepped up and stood in the same place. We never imagined them dead. We thought it was the old argument between old people and young people resting ground inch by inch as parents and children do. We didn't guess the parents would kill their children. It was a different kind of bargaining, Patrick Henry's kind. It was a claim on us. Brave Chinese students, do not be insulted by salaried hands in Palo Alto turning the page, leafing in the classified ads. Frivolity is human, it smacks of happiness. 
Thomas Jefferson is to blame for us as he is for you. The map of shed blood dissolves in the repetitions of a machine that drops an orange a foot down onto a gleaming plate and garrots it and the juice runs out and it grabs another. And the person watching, free to pay attention to what he likes in the sweet smelling pocket of time that is his, is living the life you were looking toward from that pure distance. What you died for is here, but there is nothing better anywhere than what you were. And those who pulp the boy faces of soldiers with rocks and shoes, and those who burn them out of their tanks like wasps and pulled off their limbs. Second part of the poem is called Easy to Break, Difficult to Dispose of. And it has an epigraph uh, from the Declaration of the Hunger Strikers. The price of democracy and freedom is our life. Can the Chinese people be proud of this? Would you have hardened like them, Li Peng and Deng Xiaoping and Li Peng and Deng Xiaoping, evil old men burning the bodies of their grandchildren to no avail, the stink will last while there are people to breathe? Would you have softened like us? Would you have sat at the counter and stirred in sugar next time they jammed the helmets on and stuffed their ears and snuggled the sweating guns? Would you have found a new way? Night and morning on the news, you spoke to your alien, evenly diced sounds. Familiar, though, to that part of us that never stops wishing to be mended. We do not think of democracy as a goddess. But we took her for what is, it is to be whole and spilt. The taste hangs in the air. Even the new way lost is less bitter than the old foulness, the old sweetness. And here are a couple of lines from the Tao. Seeing the small is insight, yielding to force is strength. If men are not afraid to die, it is of no avail to threaten them with death. Walking along the marsh edge, Turning this over, while in the cord grass, a bird sang its two bright notes, two dark notes, over and over. I broke a stalk of anise, and the tart new smell burst out. More new than tart, more fresh than anything. But these lives offered in the hope of freedom and taken. It's it's uh, epic, and it's uh, and it is difficult to read. I could tell uh, that it's very emotional, uh, and anyone who who reads it will feel that. But anyone who hears you read it uh, becomes it. Uh, next up, it's just a little. You'll see just a little snippet of it because we're going to have a more full. Uh, show with five stack with full performances but you're going to see just a little slice of a band called swine and you know what a blast <laughs>
after Swive, we had the dangers. couple of tunes uh, with Johnny and Michelle. That's kind of what I'm feeling right now is uh, one never knows what the future holds. We don't know about bands. We don't know about fans. We don't know about friends. But if this weekend was any indication, I think we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. 